It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today, as the video title no doubt will tell you, I am checking out the Otemu Sky Switch. Now, I believe there are now different versions of the Otemu Sky Switch. There's like a V2.2 or something of that nature from what I can tell. The switch that I have is, uh, I think it's the original. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> so, I don't actually know how to distinguish the difference between them because I haven't really seen a lot of pictures and the reason why I'm looking sideways is because I'm as I'm talking I'm trying to find pictures about this uh, only because that there seems to be limited amount of information regarding the version 2 of the actual tactile switch but uh, regardless a oh, bit of truck noise happening in the background there but regardless of that, uh, we're going to get in and have a look. So what I've got today set up, which is a little bit different to normal, is rather than the top-down view of my desktop, uh, so the normal view that you may be accustomed to is in fact this one. You can see the usual mess, but what I've got is my floating camera, which you can see right here, and it's pointing forwards. I've got a bit of white paper I'm hoping to use as background so you can see a bit of the light shadowing from behind me. And I've got the switcher already mounted in my little Laser Ninja mount so I can handle it and hold it and also do a bit of sound testing. First and foremost, I suppose the reason why it's called the Sky Switch is because it's got a lovely housing color to it. It's, it's a quite nice sort of teal-ish color so if I hold it out there you can see it without the shadow although the focus isn't doing great because of the glare from the camera but of course if I hold it steady and stable maybe the camera will will play nice see I tried this earlier before I started recording and it worked and now uh, it doesn't want to play ball so the reason why I had this set up was because it was actually giving me quite nice focus good clean crisp focus and it it just there we go okay so we're back again so you can see it says otomu there it's meant to be a tactile switch it has a clear stem on it and uh what can i say my first impressions when i started playing with this switch was it's not very tactile it's it's a sad reality but when you compare it to other switches these days, especially the negative tactility switches like Box Royals, the the Halo and Hako tactile switches, the Trues and Clears, this thing pales in comparison. Now, overall, in terms of its appearance, it's quite nice. It's got a really great color to it. It's got good, clean, sharp edges, sharp lines to it. The, the stem itself, I don't know about the fitment yet because I haven't really played around with that, but just in its its press it's nothing to write home about it feels very much like almost a stock kind of cherry brown type of sensation but it is a little bit sharper on the bump so rather than a smooth well i don't know what happened there with the camera but rather than a smooth tactile bump there's a bit more of a sharp up and down on that edge now the thing that really bothers me about this switch, though, is wobble. And this is the reason why I believe that this is the version 1. Now, I just want to show you the packet because I got these courtesy of Kevin, my co-host, so Cheddar, right? And you'll see it just says Otemu Sky 62 grams. It doesn't say version 2 or anything like that, so this is why I believe these are version 1s. And reading everything I can about the version 2s is that the version 2 is meant to have less wobble. These have a lot of wobble, and prior to getting these switches, I never really understood what people were talking about when it came to wobble. And I want to show you exactly what I mean by that. So if I can somehow rest my hand position and get the camera to focus again. Hello? 
Is this the focus you're looking for? It's the focus I'm... Come on. Come on. Reset. All right. There we go. Okay. So the, the issue that I have with this is that the housing sits above the stem, whereas most switches, the, the housing sits kind of a little bit lower than the stem. But there's also a really large noticeable amount of gap in between the housing and the stem. And if I, if I sort of move this around, you'll see there's actually a lot of visible play here. And that's just left and right. Now, if I move this up and down, you can see, like I can move the stem and the spring doesn't even push it back to where it, it might have come from. And so overall, if I just gently hold that, like I'm not even, that's pushing it down into the housing, right? But you can see how much movement in every axis, except up and down, which is that, right? So that's up and down, you can see, because the stem's darkening there. But that is a lot of play. That is a lot of slop. So you could easily put a cap on this and you can hit it and it'll move to a particular position and it won't necessarily return to a a standard position. And that's that's the wobble that people are talking about. Now, I have uh, almost a 60% now of switches and I was like checking this out earlier and I was like kind of nudging a lot of these other switches trying to find something else that had as much wobble as that and to be honest, uh, there's one or two that has wobble, but not in both directions. <laughs> Most of the switches here have wobble in one direction, which in the opposite direction is prevented by the width or the height. So for, for these Otemu skies to have that in both directions, it's actually really, really concerning. Now, if I take my switch collection and I try and get a bit of clarity here. Okay, so this is an unbranded, so this one here is the SMK, but here's this random switch. I'm not even sure what it is. And right next to it, that's a Fosen switch. Okay, so this one here, if I can, there we go. Um, you know, it's got up and down wobble, but it's left and right is like, if I let go of that, it actually returns to center. And that's what I'm talking about. Every one of these switches that have like an inherent type of movement allowable within the housing, even if you move it off center and you let go of it, it returns back to its natural position. Whereas these Otemu skies did not, not 100% of the way. Now that could be a function of spring weight. If we increase the spring weight on this, it would naturally push the stem up and firmer and therefore have it against the natural resting position, but at the 62 grams, it is not exhibiting that behavior. So that's that's what it looks like, and that's what it inherently feels like. Uh, I've got one mounted here on the the bottom of the uh, the switch tester here, and so as I was saying before, you know, it's got a bit of a a sharp bump, so. It is more tactile than a standard brown, but it is actually less tactile than the uh, Otomu switches itself that are the purple series. So let me just move some bits and pieces of this helping hands so I can get that in. Okay, so these two switches here Come on. Do we need some lighting effects? Probably. All right. So there we go. Uh, oh, come on. So that purple there and that purple there, the colors aren't representing very well. But both of these are actually Otemu switches. And they're actually more tactile than the Sky switch, which is down here. So if you, if you would prefer a Otemu tactile switch, then I would actually go with that light purple and the darker purple version of their own tactile switches because yeah 
Uh, and I think it's just a spring weight that's bit the difference between those uh, sort of purples. They do have this silver, this Otemu silver one as well. Um, I don't actually remember the names of them simply because they were in a, in a tester kit, but I'd have to go look that up. But this silver one here is also an Otemu switch, and this teal feels very similar, but this silver has a heavier spring in it. Okay. Oops. There. In comparison to, say, an Arctos switch, Arctos switches have a distinctive lip to them, whereas the Otemu Skies don't. And compared to a Zealant or a Zeal V2, it's a lot more tactile. I would say a Zeal V1. It's quite, I would say it's similar to a V1, but just not as sharp. So, you know, it's it's acceptable, but nothing really fancy to talk about. And I think the wobble is what really kills it because you feel it and it moves. It moves under your fingertips. It moves under your fingertips. Now, for a standard sound test purposes, what it sounds like just by regular pressing, here we go. I spam it. If I do a flick test, which doesn't really represent very much anyway, it's got a it's got a nice sort of bouncy response. Now, if I put a, a keycap on it, let me find a, a, a regular keycap. Okay, so it's just an OEM. There we go. So it's just a a bog standard OEM keycap. And if we do the flick test, doesn't look like it's coming off. And it's not too snug. I can say that some of the other switches are definitely more snug than that particular stem. So there you have it. There is the Otomo Sky version 1 switch. Not sure if I'll ever encounter a V2 or 2.2 anytime soon. Of course, if you guys who are watching this know actually exactly what version I've got, then please let me know because I'm ignorant otherwise. Um, it's a nice color. I don't know if there's any housing compatibility if you wanted to take it apart and, and swap it with something else just for that teal colored housing. If I can get my camera to focus. And uh, yeah, not even sure what the exact current price is, but I think they were around the 50 cent mark. So, you know, not as cheap as Gatorons, but I think tactility is probably a little bit better than your standard Bog Gatoron switch. So it's really up to you up to you if you think they're worth it there you have it thanks very much of course for checking out this video uh, i hopefully will have some more stuff coming up soon for you to check out and don't forget we have our weekly podcast my mind's a bit frazzled at the moment um, wait for the truck to go by don't forget we have our weekly podcast you can check out on our libsim page and if you'd like to support us I'm more than happy to, of course, give you a shout out for anything like that. If you want to join us on Patreon, you can follow us on Instagram. And if you'd like an invite to our Slack, sorry, if you'd like an invitation to our Slack, then please let me know and I'm more than happy to invite you. All you have to do is send us an email to theboardpodcast at gmail.com. So, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.